Hello and welcome to this short video walkthrough of the new Anaconda installer that will be shipped with Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. My name is Mark Flitter and I'm a technical writer for the Customer Portal content team. Here we will be doing an interactive install from the latest server boot ISO and, and an external tree of the latest RHEL 7 packages. The first screen we see is language selection. Similarly to RHEL 6, we have languages on the left and associated keyboards on the right. I'll be needing English with a UK layout. The proceed button on this screen is in the bottom right hand corner. As you see, I'm still using testing versions, so we'll click through and move to the next step. This is the installation summary screen, which has several options for branching off and specifying any detail the installer currently doesn't have. This is a change from RHEL 6, which was a sequence of questions regardless of whether the options needed changing. We can see from the orange meshes at the bottom and the warning triangles which parts are needed to be highlighted to make begin installation available. First thing we need to do is access our install tree is a network. This screen shows our available network devices and also where we specify a host name. Selecting Configure brings up the familiar dialog that allows us to manually specify the device configuration. This virtual machine has a DHCP network, so the only change I'm going to make here is enabling the device at boot so that I don't have to make other arrangements afterwards. On these subscreens, we use the Done button in the top left to go back to the installation summary screen, which is now a hub for configuration tasks. So now we have a functioning network connection, we need to specify the location of our install tree. This screen allows us to select either a mounted ISO or a network location. I'm going to enter a network location here. Below the Network Location dialog is a way to specify additional repositories. To use this, just click the plus icon on the bottom left of that dialog. On the right, you should specify the name of the new repository and include its location in a similar manner to the install tree above. The configuration for each repository you add is recorded dynamically and there is no need to go seeking for a save button. So we'll remove that config and move on with our install. So now we have the install tree available, we must specify our packages. In the interests of time, I'm going to be doing a minimal install. Those who have already tested the RHEL 7 public beta may notice that the base environment section is shorter. That's only because we're booting from a minimal ISO and using specifically the server install tree. If we take a look at the server with GUI option, we still see the list of optional components on the right, and you can select those as has been done previously. So let's reselect Minimal and move on. The last spoke we must complete is the installation destination. This screen has changed and old behavior should not be expected. This machine has an SSD attached, which is what I will be installing to. It's important to remember that no changes are made to your disks until you select Begin Installation on the summary screen, and we're going to repeat that message a few times. If you have one more disk available, they will show up in the box here on the top. Only disks with a tick icon will be used. In interactive mode, Anaconda assumes that you intend all of the checked or ticked devices to be used for the boot volume. For this example though, I am going to configure partitioning manually and encrypt data. Common with the other spoke screens, we use the top left done button to move to the next step. On the manual partitioning screen, we see that I have old encrypted volumes on this disk, so we're going to just remove those mount points first. And here we'll have the option to remove all partitions in the table, and I'm going to say yes to that. So now we have the option to choose if I want an LVM-based disk layout one, or one on ButterFS, or even standard partitions. When you specify your mount points, you have the opportunity to set the sizes. On the test platforms here, I often increase the size of slash boot and swap, and use the rest for root. So with that, 
I shall remove those and select automatic partitioning so that we can see that too. Again, over on the right, we have options to alter the file system configuration. You will note that slash boot is now XFS, which is the new default in RHEL 7. So once again, as we're on a spoke screen, we click the top left done button to go back to the summary. If something isn't right, you'll get an orange highlighted message at the bottom of the screen and the opportunity to click done again to confirm or to make changes. As this host is encrypted with Lux already, I will use a short password just to demonstrate the encryption screen here in the virtual machine. And now I'm going to have a screen of proposed changes to the disk partition and we can see exactly what it's going to do once we start the installation. We'll destroy each of the partitions already in place and then we're going to create a new partition table, add the partitions that we've just okayed, and install the file systems. On the summary screen we see there are no more warning triangles and all my options look to be correct. So let's begin the installation. Our final tasks while the install goes ahead are the root password and user creation. I'm going to use a simple password again, just for demonstration purposes. On the user screen here, we have the usual fields, so let's fill those out. By making the user administrator, we can use sudo out of the box after reboot. Taking a quick look at the advanced options, we can set a specific home directory, specify a manual UID or GID if necessary, and we can see that selecting Make Administrator has added the wheel group to this user. And that's it. We're along for the ride now until the install finishes and the reboot button appears in the bottom right hand corner. Thank you for watching. Please let us know if this video is useful to you. We listen to all feedback and your participation influences our direction. You can use the comments section on this video's page or start a new discussion on the portal. And we look forward to hearing from you soon.